continuing from the last chapter. On the other hand, the holodynamic dance is everywhere. It is every one. It can be clearly traced in the anthropology, anthropology of emerging cultures, religion, and even in science. For me, science is fascinating dance. I would like to discuss, for example, the dance of physics. The dance of physics. Physics is considered the underlying science of all other schools of science. Traditionally, physics, physics, physics has been particle-focused. Isaac Newton's Copernicus, Hamilton, Locke, even George Washington, and those who framed the Constitution of the United States were particle players. The government of the people, by the people, was the application of particle thinking to government. Thus our government and our sciences in America have been dominated by particle mentalities. It has been a particle dance. It is also not until the 20th century that where wave dynamics came under the eye of physics. The shift in focus occurred because traditional physics could not ex find a way to explain the stability of the atom or the amount of energy energy radiating from a black box. These two issues were the only clouds in a completely blue sky of traditional particle physics at the turn of the century. But in order to explain those two clouds, an entirely new physics had to be constructed. The new physics came, became known as quantum physics. Quantum physics deals with the wave dynamics of reality. Born's atomic structure announced in 1905 was able to explain the stability of the, of the atom through a series of wave harmonics that he associated with each type of atom. It was like taking a long guitar string, cutting it in pieces, each of which was the perfect length of a note, and welding each of the cut ends together. Thus the wave, or perfect note, could now be contained in a circular wave that Born called a standing wave. The Born's model each, and I may be pronouncing that guy's name wrong, it's B-O-H-R. Born's model, each atom had a different wavelength, like the length of a wire on a guitar. So each wave had a different frequency. Thus each atom was viewed as having an atomic structure that perfectly matched the harmonics of those frequencies so the structure of the atom depended upon its harmonic frequency. Born was able to use his computations about frequencies to predict several elements that were not known to exist at the time. He was largely scorned by the linear thinking scientists of the day but his predicted elements were later discovered and placed on the atomic table. Quantum physics was born. The implications that wave dynamics were elementary to physical reality caused more than a mere stir among scientists. Traditionally, only particle information was used to describe reality. Now they have to examine wave dynamics. Great debates arose. From those debates and the resulting research projects came the discovery of a new world of subatomic dynamics that expanded beyond traditional models and it became the domain of quantum physics. Quantum physics turned out to be the most accurate predictor of reality ever devised by humans, whereas particle physics could predict with a degree of accuracy from 10 to the plus and minus 7. Quantum physics could predict over twice that range from 10 to the plus and minus 14. Quantum physics demonstrated predictability over 10 million times the range of particle physics. David Bohm, one of the fathers of quantum physics, outlined some of the new premises of quantum physics. This premise makes quantum physics distinct from particle physics. As it turns out, these same premises are also good indicators of the difference between particle and wave consciousness. In summary, Bohm says the quantum physics shows Every set of circumstances driven by an unmanifested force, the potential force. Everything is made of information that manifests as particle and wave dynamics. There is an implicit order built into all of life. Everything is connected. 
These findings are a confirmation of the findings from the field of consciousness. It was as if the quantum physicists had been carving a tunnel out of a mountain of reality from one direction and the scientists of consciousness are carving its own tunnel from the other direction. The most amazing thing was that both tunnels met and provided a passage through into the enfolded dimensions of reality. It provided an easier passage for those who wanted to make a difference in life. Everything was made of centers of information. New sciences were spawned from quantum physics. Fuel dynamics, or fluid dynamics, field dynamics, thermal dynamics, and other holistic perspectives soon developed. The possibility of parallel worlds of information existed in domains beyond the speed of light and within other space-time continuums because the focus of great debates be, uh, became the great focus of debate. Um, on the tail of these debates and the parallel with the quantum physics mo movement came the development of computers and the birth of the information age. Within these emerging new sciences come the discovery of self-organizing information systems and the unveiling of the natural order of growth of living things. There are many examples of how this new information was put to use. Some re revealed how information organizes according to an implicit order. One such example is found in the biosphere or biodome in Arizona. The Arizona biosphere. When scientists wanted to create a biosphere that would sustain human life on the moon on Mars, the government funded the creation of the biosphere in Tucson, Arizona. They built a complex of buildings in the desert that duplicated as much as possible everything hum humans would need to sustain themselves on another planet. They included each type of terrain, hills, lakes, and streams, as well as each type of microscopic and biological systems complete with its own self-contained air and water supply. It didn't work. Everything turned putrid. No matter what they did, the system broke down. Over and over they experimented until finally they took everything out and started all over again. They began with just a basic physics component, components, pure air, water, granules of dirt. Then they placed the first smallest microorganism in the pure environment. Much to their ch chagrin, it turned the entire system putrid. They were discouraged. They left the system alone, and before they could solve the problem, it self-corrected. The air cleaned, the water cleaned, and the bi biological system balanced itself. Recher researchers were confused, but they put the next level of microorganisms into the system. Again, it turned putrid. They waited, and soon it corrected itself. They continued this process to introduce the next level of life form into the system, one at a time, and allowing it to self-organize, until they finally got a system that would sustain the life of eight human beings in a, an area the size of two football fields. For me, the most amazing thing about the biosphere is that the system self-organized into expanding manifestations of life. As I researched further, I found that this property of self-organization seems inherent within all life systems. It is found everywhere in nature. Bohm refers to it as the implicit order. Such a built-in order might, I thought, be influencing the way consciousness emerges. Indeed, according to developmental psycholog psychologist consciousness followers and follows an implicit order. Jean Paget, Lawrence Kohlberg, and the host of others have spent lifetimes of man's hours studying this order. Handicapped by the mechanism framework of their 17th century schooling, their focus remained largely linear, while the results show an undeniable order of growth. Understanding the new premises of quantum physics helps get us unstuck from these old limitations. Like the biosphere, the human mind is able to self-organize. One sense senses the potential that drives every set of circumstances and then oneself discovers that everything is made from information. It is possible to learn from one's own self-referencing that information gives energy its form of to manifest as particle wave or a holodynamic presence. 
Within the holodynamic view, the holographic nature of reality can be viewed as a holographic paradigm. Ken Wilbur, the holographic universe, Mike Talbot, the holographic memory storage, Carl Prim Primbrand, these theor theories may a lot of sense. The universe becomes one living, interconnected, holographic being. Putting together the implications from quantum physics and information theory wraps the language around life that fits this information age and opens the science of consciousness to completely new levels of understanding. Classical physicists, physics, physicists, classical physicists are particle mentalities who usually lack personal presence. Like any one person that dances a particle thinking, they have little, if any, consciousness or emotional dynamic, let alone the holodynamic nature of reality. The same is true of particle theor theologians, doctors, psychologists, teachers, and leaders in the corporate world of business and government. It is not until particle players explore the possibility that every set of circumstances is driven by its potential that they make space for the possibility that their own personal potential is real. They begin to realize that each person is a set of circumstances. It becomes possible that each person is driven by a potential and that each person can discover their potential and use it. Reality becomes a presence that, they soon discover, has been affecting measurable results in their experiments. It is this presence that has been, at least in part, creating their results. It frames their view. Rational science can be seen as a house of cards that can completely collapse under the weight of presence. For example, in quantum physics, there is no such thing as object, objective measuring. Any measuring act, active activity affects results. It is impossible to objectively measure momentum and mass at the same time. As Heisenberg explained, one cannot weigh a running horse. Likewise, it is impossible to know anything absolutely in the dynamic universe where mass and mo momentum are continuous factors. One cannot measure without being conscious and consciousness affects what you are measuring. It is this basic, since everything is constantly in motion, it is impossible to really measure mass. Physicists just as any other dancers on the floor of life cannot be forced to dance the quantum dance of physics. They each play by choice, nor can they be forced to be present. It is the choice that has been freely made, raised in the rational environment, taught by particle teachers, dependent on the mechanism of society. It takes a quantum leap in consciousness to realize anyone and every, everything has a choice. Now, as I'm reading this, there is one guy, I forget his name, but he designs weapons for his his country. He's offered a challenge to have a debate on what sciences I know. Um, he's part of the Vochter group, making a lot of the negative videos about me. And, you know, it just basically wants to challenge this science. Now, this guy makes his living off of creating weapons so we can continue our wars. He's stuck in the linear thinking that I must create a bomb, otherwise my enemy will kill me if I don't kill my enemy. I must create this war so that my kids will have a better future. And I must stay in this war so that I can earn as high of a living as I can, so I can provide all the stuff that my daughter needs, so my daughter thinks her world is perfect. I mean, these are the mentality. I mean, this guy is telling me that this is what he believes in. Um, so as long as he's stuck in that belief, and he also believes there is no free will, that he can't jump out of that thought, <laughs> you know, but his belief systems don't necessarily mean that it's true. To have all of that war and to think his enemy is always going to beat him and that he always has to have that weapon to kill his enemy before his enemy kills him, that dance, that game that this guy is playing in, is only a game and only a dance that he chooses to play in. It is his choice. He chooses to dance that particular dance. So if I even had a conversation with this guy, as he's constantly putting me down, what's the conversation going to be about? It, it, it's going to be a dance of, are you right or I'm right? And it's a matter of, 
you are right if you want to be right. If you want to believe that there is a war, my only question is, is why would you want to believe that story if it destroys your whole friggin' planet? You know, I choose to believe a different story. I'm playing a different dance. And my dance is, is I ain't playing a dance with you. I'm not at competition with anybody. It's a matter of what you choose to believe and what you choose to create. So I blocked and deleted them and won't even have that challenge until he's got an open mind to have that conversation. Peace out. I'll continue.